V5, Intelligent Simplicity. Today we're going to be taking a look at the new V5 control system that Beck just released and how we can use their new software platform to program robots with the new smart motor. If you've watched our previous tutorial video on how to program a robot using Robot C, then this should be pretty familiar. Let's get to work. To begin, I want to mention that we can apply these concepts to program as many motors as you'd like, but for simplicity, I'll focus on programming a robot set to the Clawbot configuration using Tank Drive. The motors used for this version are in the exact same configuration as the previous generation of Clawbot, meaning there are two motors controlling the base, one for the claw, and one for the arm. We're going to use the two joysticks on the controller to actuate the motors in the base, while the shoulder buttons will be used to operate the arm and claw motors. Just as in Robot C, we're going to have a single line of code for each joystick, and a set of three if statements for the buttons. Now there are a few options to get a motor to spin in VEX Coding Studio, but the one I'm going to focus on is the motor.spin command. This command is powerful because it provides the programmer with three parameters that can be used to fine tune your control of the motor. Let's take a closer look. First, begin by replacing the word motor with the actual name of the motor that you use during setup. The first input is the direction type. This is the rotational direction that you want your motor to spin. Basically, here's where you're going to decide if you want your motor to run forward or reverse. The middle block is where you will place a value which will determine the rate of rotational speed the motor will have. In Robot C, this value fell between negative and positive 127, but in VEX Coding Studio, we no longer use those arbitrary unitless values. In VEX Coding Studio, you get to use one of three different types of value, which is going to be declared in this third box. The options for this input are RPM, PCT, which is percent, or DPS, which is degrees per second. These units allow you to control your motor in several different ways. I like them because we no longer have to write additional conversion functionality into the code as we had to do in Robot C. Since we're using a joystick to control the motor, we want the motor to spin at a rate that is variably consistent with how far you're pressing the joystick down. If you're pressing it all the way down, we want the motor to spin at full speed, halfway would be halfway speed, and so on. That means that instead of placing a value in this middle box, we're going to put a new command in here that will draw the value from the joystick being pressed. Alright, let's get started. If you're on a VRC team and looking to write code to control your robot at a competition, you can access a competition template by selecting Example Projects and then scrolling down to the bottom. Notice that this template can only be opened in the VEX C++ and Pro formats, so we're going to avoid the Mod Kit or the Scratch Inspired Block Coding format. Since C++ is a superset of the C coding language that we're already familiar with, that's the option I'm going to select. If you need help incorporating the code into a competition template, please check out the other videos on our channel. We begin by selecting the C++ format option, which opens up to the page where you'll complete the setup process for your sensors and motors. This is where we'll establish the names and properties for the controller and four motors that we need for the clawbot. We have two motors for the base, one for the arm, and another to control the claw. We'll also drag in a controller so you can see how its name will be used in the coding. Now we'll rename our motors to something a bit more descriptive and then we'll assign each motor to a specific port on the V5 brain. If you're used to using Robot C, then you'll know that it would sometimes matter which motor ports you're using. Some motors were left as two wires, while others were three wires in tandem with the motor controller. The V5 system addresses these issues by including a motor controller directly in the smart motor. Now that our controller and motors are set up, let's switch over to the text portion of VEX Coding Studio. Just as in Robot C, we'll place all our code within the curly brackets of the main task, as well as within an infinite while loop. An infinite while loop is created so that the program can pull the remote control values every single iteration. This loop basically causes the program to just run forever. I'm going to begin by coding the joysticks because it's way easier than coding the buttons. We'll use the motor.spin command, which can simply be dragged from this menu right into your program. You'll notice there are two spin commands, and we want the one that has three parameters. We'll start by changing the word motor into the name of the motor we want to actuate. For the first command, let's get the base motor on the left side to spin when we toggle the left joystick on the controller, and the left joystick can be called using axis 3, and we'll adjust the units as percent. Let's do the same for the right side, but make sure to indicate that we're now using axis 2. Alright, so looking at what we've done so far, the left motor will spin at a rate determined by the value that is being read by the axis 3 joystick, while the right side will spin at a rate controlled by how far the axis 2 joystick is being pressed. I told you joysticks were easy. Now let's take a look at how to get the arm and claw motors to spin by pressing a pair of buttons on the controller. Let's use the shoulder buttons on the controller and program them to actuate the motors on the claw and arm. When mapping a motor to a button, or in our case a pair of buttons, we have to think of the code as three distinct parts. An if statement, an else if statement, and an else statement. Within the parentheses goes the condition, and within the curly brackets will go the output. In our case, if we're pressing button L1, we want a motor to spin forward, else if we're pressing button L2, we want the same motor to spin in the opposite direction. The else is for all other times in which one of the two above conditions are not being met, and in that case we would want the motor to not spin or to break. Let's put this idea into code.
So we need to place a command within the condition that tells the motor to only spin when a specific button is being pressed. In this example, we'll use the dot pressing command. As you can probably tell, we first declare the name of the controller and then which button we want to use. The dot pressing command is used because we want the motor to continue to spin as long as the button is being pressed. If we were to use one of the other commands like dot pressed, then the motor would only be able to spin for a predetermined amount of time, which is not something we want in our claw bot. The way we have this design means that if we're pressing button L1, we want the arm motor to spin in a forward direction at 50% of its maximum value. Else, if we're pressing button L2, we want the arm motor to spin in a reverse direction at 50% of its maximum value. And finally, if neither button is being pressed, we want the arm motor to do nothing. Actually, that's not true. We could do better than have the motor do nothing. In fact, since we don't want the arm to fall unless button L2 is being pressed, we can write a command which will hold the motor at the exact same position. This is very helpful for coding motors which are used to lift heavy stuff. The command looks like this. And we're done writing code to operate the arm motor. All this left is to code the claw motor, but since it's basically going to be the same architecture as the arm motor, we can simply copy and paste the three if statements and make a few alterations. Quickly changing the motor name to claw and the buttons to R1 and R2 is all we need to do. And we're done. This is how you can program the new V5 smart motors to actuate by toggling a joystick or by pressing a pair of buttons on the controller. I hope this was helpful and please check back to our channel often. We're working to put out some new VEX tutorial content, so if there are any topics you would like to see us cover, just place it down in the comments. Thanks for watching and good luck.